When designing the structural framing of a house based on conventional framing provisions, one of the key elements to get right is the sizing of roof rafters. Rafters must be strong enough to support the weight of the roof itself and loads such as the weight of construction workers and their tools. For roofs built in regions with snow, the roof must be able to support its own self-weight and snow loads. Additionally, roof framing elements must have sufficient stiffness to resist excessive deflection or sagging during loading and over time. The International Residential Code or the IRC provides clear and accessible guidelines to help ensure that rafters are properly sized for safety and performance. The IRC provides prescriptive provisions for many structural elements, including roof rafters. These are known as prescriptive provisions because the code offers predefined solutions such as span tables, allowable spacing, and material options that can be followed without the need for complex engineering calculations or a licensed structural designer. These solutions are based on widely accepted engineering principles and are deemed safe under typical residential conditions. This means that the IRC is designed for use by anyone interested in the design of residential structures and is therefore not limited to licensed engineers or architects. Homeowners, builders, Framers and inspectors are all permitted to design and verify residential framing using these prescriptive methods, provided the structure falls within the scope and limitations defined in the code. This makes the IRC a highly practical tool for conventional construction, empowering users to make compliant design decisions without requiring advanced technical training. In this video, we will walk through the steps for sizing roof rafters using the IRC's prescriptive span tables. We will cover key factors including species and grade of lumber, rafter spacing, roof loads, and span lengths. The sizing of rafters is determined from the series of span tables provided in section R802.4.1. This series consists of eight span tables that are divided into two broad groups. One group of four tables provides for the selection of rafters with an allowable deflection of L over 180 and the second group has an allowable deflection of L over 240. For each deflection group, the code provides four tables. The first table is based on 20 pounds per square foot live load. The second table is based on 30 pounds per square foot ground snow load. The fourth table is based on 50 pounds per square foot ground snow load and the last table is based on 70 pounds per square foot ground snow load. The span of a rafter is the horizontal projection of the length of the rafter. When sizing rafters, we measure this horizontal projection from the center line of the exterior bearing wall to the center line of the ridge board. Therefore, for gable type roofs, the actual length of the rafter is longer than the span because of the slope and because the rafter typically extends beyond the bearing wall. The length of the cantilever beyond the exterior bearing wall should not exceed 24 inches unless designed by a licensed engineer or architect according to accepted engineering practice. The rafter tables are based on the assumption that ceiling joists are provided at the bottom of the attic space to prevent the outward thrust. The code also allows ceiling joists or rafter ties to be provided further up the attic space but this requires adjustments. If you wish to learn more about the thrust forces resisted by ceiling joists and the application of rafter ties then please check out our complete conventional IRC roof framing design course at www.conventionalframing.com. The residential code provides prescriptive design specifications for ceiling joists and rafters of certain species and grades. The rafter design tables that we will look at provide design requirements for four species of soft wood lumber. These include dug fir larch, hem fir, southern pine and spruce pine fir. For each species, the code provides design provisions for four grades including select structural, grade number one, grade number two and grade number three. Let us briefly discuss the grades and their differences in terms of the structural capacity. The American Wood Council supplement to the national design specification lists several commercial grades of lumber. These include select structural grade, number one and better, number one, number two, stud grade, number three, construction grade, 
standard grade and utility grade. Select structural is the highest grade in terms of structural properties and quality while utility grade is the lowest grade. Therefore, for wood joists provided for in the residential code, select structural grade is the highest grade in terms of material and structural properties while grade number 3 is the lowest. This means that a select structural joist will provide greater capacity and therefore have a longer span compared to a grade number 3 joist supporting the same load. Let us consider the project shown. The building has a footprint that is 40 feet in length and 25 feet wide. The building has a gable roof with rafters spanning from the ridge to the bearing walls. The gable roof pitch is 8 to 12 and the roof dead load is 15 pounds per square foot on the horizontal projection while the live load is 20 pounds per square foot on the horizontal projection. There are no snow loads. The framing includes rafters that are spaced at 24 inches on center. The rafters have a maximum span of 12.5 feet which is half the width of the building. The framing plan also shows ceiling joist spaced at 24 inches on center. According to detail A that is referenced on the roof plan, the ceiling joists are attached to the rafters at the top plates. Therefore, we will not need to use the rafter span adjustment factor for this design. The first step is to determine the applicable table to use amongst the eight rafter tables. Since there are no snow loads, we can eliminate six of the eight tables from consideration and we are left with two. One table is based on an allowable deflection of L over 180 and the other table is based on an allowable deflection of L over 360. According to table R301.7, the allowable deflection for rafters having slopes greater than 3 to 12 with the finished ceiling not attached to the rafters is L over 180. Since the rafters in this project have a slope of 8 to 12 and since they are not directly attached to a ceiling, the allowable deflection is L over 180. Therefore, we will use Table 1 in Section R802.4.1 to size the rafters. Generally, designers will select the most economical size that meets the requirements. Let us try 2x8 grade number 2 Douglas fir rafters. The rafters are spanning 12.5 feet with ceiling joists attached to the rafters at the top plates. Therefore, we will verify that 2x8 grade number 2 Douglas fir rafters spanning 12.5 feet are code compliant by using Table 1 in Section R802.4.1. From the criteria we are working with, the roof dead load is 15 PSF. This is the weight of the entire roof assembly which includes the ceiling. Based on this total loading, we can estimate that the dead load supported by the rafters will not exceed 10 PSF. We will therefore use the 10 PSF dead load column to determine the allowable rafter span. The maximum permitted span for 2x8 Doug fir grade number 2 rafters spaced at 24 inches on center and supporting 10 pounds per square foot dead load and 20 pounds per square foot live load at an allowable deflection of L over 180 is 15 feet. Since the span on the drawings is 12.5 feet, these rafters are sufficient. Since 2x8 members are sufficient, we should check if the small and more economical 2x6 members are sufficient. Based on the same table, 2x6 Doug fir number 2 rafters supporting 10 PSF dead load and 20 PSF live load have a maximum allowable span of 11 feet and 11 inches. This is less than the 12.5 feet that is required in this project. Therefore, we will stick with the 2x8 rafters which have been shown to meet the span demands for this project. This is how rafters are selected from the IRC span tables. In conclusion, the selection of rafters using the IRC span tables is a multi-step process that involves determining the design loads, selecting the appropriate lumber species and grade, establishing the allowable deflection and finally choosing the correct rafter size that meets this criteria. In our example, we assumed specific roof loads and arrived at 2x8 Douglas fir grade number 2 rafters spanning 12.5 feet. In real projects, the dead load is not just assumed, 
It depends on the actual materials used in the roof assembly, such as sheathing, roofing type, insulation, and ceiling finishes. Additionally, while we used 2x8 rafters and noted that it is not acceptable to use 2x6 Douglas fir grade number 2 rafters spanning the same distance, it is entirely possible to use the same 2x6 rafters if we incorporate intermediate supports such as purlins and braces resting on interior bearing walls. We could also use 2x6 Douglas fir grade number 1 rafters which can span 12.5 feet but these may be expensive due to the higher grade. These variations, and the judgment to apply them correctly, are essential parts of prescriptive residential design that go beyond the basic span tables. To explore all these considerations in depth, including how to determine dead loads, design structural connection details and develop complete drawing sets, please check out the Residential Wood Framing Design Series at www.conventionalframing.com. This comprehensive course walks you through the structural design of a full two-story residence using the prescriptive provisions of the International Residential Code. Whether you're a contractor looking to streamline your workflow, a designer aiming to master conventional wood framing or simply a building enthusiast planning your own home, this course is built for you. Visit the website today and start designing with confidence. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more insights into wood framing.